okay before we start though uh, let me just give you some little background info mm -hmm. um so i think it's just it's just uh yeah, my emails it's just a good idea if you want to learn dynamo to read through this primer okay the is dynamo that the one primer. you shared before i think i don't think i shared that before uh, yeah. is it because you sent a document yeah, so, some time ago Oh, well, that's a that's that was for Python. So that's oh, a, oh, a Python, sorry, not Dynamo. Revit API. So this this primer just like it's a very detailed explanation of all the nodes okay. in Dynamo. Um, yeah, everything you need to know. And that's a good resource, good. and we've yeah. recorded it now, so we can come back to this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very good resource, and also join the community. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. If you if you have questions. Um, just make sure it's not been answered before. So you search. Yes. Um, otherwise, the guys on there are not happy to answer. I'm sure. It gets a little annoying. Um, yeah, yeah, but um, I'm on here as well. Um, I've learned a lot from from this platform. Uh, yes. The guys are very, very helpful. Yeah. Just, just something that uh, immediately jumps out to me is um, that Excel sheets, creating world types. I mean, even something as simple as creating sheets from Excel sheets, you know, at our office, we don't even have that yet, you know. so. It's, I just feel there's so much low hanging fruit that we should all be. There's using. so much, <laughs> yeah. and people share scripts as well that you can just copy and modify. You know, uh, awesome. You know, yeah. it's just it's just very very helpful. I've learned I've learned most of my Dynamo from this community. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah, good guys on here. Yeah. Including okay. Yourself. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'll just explain the Dynamo interface. You will notice that it's a lot different from um, Grasshopper. Mm. So over here, if you look on this, you can see my mouse and my arrow, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so over here, these are this is where the default nodes are located, right? On the left-hand side. And then you can search if you want a node, for instance, for like points, um, points by coordinates. You just click there and the node pops in over here. Okay. And you can also, to find another node, you can then also right click and search over there. So it's kind of similar to Grasshopper, but it's, I think in Grasshopper, it's uh, the left mouse. You'd have to double click with the left, mm. I think. Oh, yes, on yeah. the canvas. Mm. Yeah, on the canvas. Um, and then if you install custom packages, also different from Grasshopper, the custom packages get loaded on, on the top panel in Grasshopper. But in Dynamo, if you install packages, they all come to the bottom here as add-ons. Okay, yeah. So these are all the packages that I've installed, quite a lot of packages. Um, yeah. And this uh, uh, um, Dynamo for dummies yeah. question. So this is like a separate <laughs> application you open up or do you have to open via Revit? What's the, okay, you, so to, ins yeah. to install oh Dynamo, oh, sorry, yes. yeah, sorry, I should have shown you that. <laughs> <as well. laughs> I'm okay, assuming so, it's easy, but I've never done it before, so yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's not difficult. So to to open it, it's just over there. Ah, oh, okay, got it. Just click on Dynamo there. Yeah, basic. It comes in as a basically a plugin, and, and the there's also the hmm. on the manage tab, and there's also a Dynamo player. At the end so the dynamo player is the if you make let's say a script to number parking bays mm. and you wanted uh people in your office to be able to use that script they can mm. use the dynamo player to just run that script in within the revit window yes. so but dynamo is basically like the back end and dynamo player is the front end you know for people who don't want to mess yeah. around with dynamo sure yeah cool Okay. I'm looking for my pen because the speaking to you is giving me some ideas for our site plans. So it's like a good. <laughs> okay. You can just watch the video again. Yes, no, sure. It's going to make Okay. Nice and to, to install the packages, um, you come over here, search for a package, right? Search for a package and a window pops up and you have to wait for this thing to load. Sometimes it takes a while. Then if you know what package you want to install, you then type in here and then install it. But I'm like, okay, you can see now I just type, let's say I want to install clockwork. I just go to clockwork and then I 
you'll say install but I've installed clockwork so all these packages here that I've installed I would say you should you should install them this Archilab clockwork data shapes Dynamo unfold then genius Lochi. I, I like the, the Hogwarts stuff um oh the Hogwarts that's a it's ran, that's what generative design it's like a random thing <laughs> I just installed um but those are that's not essential so the genius Lochi mm. Mesh Toolkit, Orchid, Pattern Toolkit, Rhythm, and Springs. I would say install those. Yeah, definitely. Also, just curious of packages. Are they Autodesk or is there a bit of a, a community that creates them as well? It's a community that creates it, yeah. Okay, Basically great. Community that feels it. better already. Yeah, community. Um, so be careful of packages you install. Some of them are terrible, right? Okay. <laughs> so mm. some of them are good. Some of them are really bad. So just install the well-established one. Clockwork is, and Springs, for instance, have been around for a very long time. And they're yeah. good because they are um, full Python pa um, packages written prop um, fully in Python. Some other packages are written with Dynamo nodes which okay. makes them run slower. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. That's a lot of information, okay. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Um, the little bit I'm reading is it seems like C Sharp is much more efficient than Python as well. Like I saw a chart somewhere in terms of, you know, computing yes. time. I'm, I'm sure Dynamo yeah. will probably have that as well. Yeah, C Sharp is more, yeah, more efficient. Okay, so there are three ways to script in Dynamo in my, and for what I, from my understanding, mm -hmm. you can use nodes, basically a node like this. You can use um, design script, which is this. I, I'm not sure if Grasshopper has this uh, scripting language in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, it does. You can, you can write Python scripts um, within Grasshopper. Okay, so no, no, I know um, Python, but like um, Dynamo has its own scripting language as well. This is called design script. You can oh, also yeah, do- yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, so you, Rhino Rhino has Rhino script. It has Rhino um, script, okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. Cool. And That's then cool. um Grasshopper has um GH Python, which is actually not Python itself, but I think it's a wrapper uh which allows you to do some Python coding within, okay. within Grasshopper. Yeah. Cool. Mm. And then you can also then do Python as well. Um, so three ways, but um, my advice, I don't know, my, my dine was a little slow today. I wonder why. That's why I prefer grasshopper. <laughs> I'm starting to prefer. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, you can run Python as well. Um, yeah, but I would advise that if you don't know much Python, you, you just use the basic nodes and then try and get into design script as well. Yeah, before you dive into python yeah you guys have really put me yeah. under pressure saying that python is quite a quite essential <laughs> which uh, is yeah, good I would, so. <laughs> yeah. I would say it's i would say it's essential yes. okay then we can just with that background information we can get into this so i'm not going to i'm just going to use this as a guide um mm. for what we're doing here and um yeah so all everything i've written here oh, okay with the design script is this thing here mm. is mm -hmm. this geometry and as you notice another thing about dynamo is it has a 3d preview which mm. grasshopper doesn't have the preview for grasshopper is in rhino, rhino so you have to true. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so in Gra in dynamo you can see the geometry um, as you work in it that's quite a slick interface so i have to hand that to autodesk to generally get that right you know yeah, that's all they've got. <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. So let's 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 just start making some stuff. Okay. So I'm just as you can just watch here. I, I'm going to follow this precisely, mm. and I'm going to be explaining. So I'll just mm. hide the preview of this so it doesn't get in our way. Mm -hmm. So you just right click, preview. Mm -hmm. So also I didn't explain the code block. The code block is the way of doing design script in Dynamo. So if you just double click. With your right um, mouse you get a code block then you can start typing some code in there All right mm -hmm. okay so then now let's find point 
by coordinates. So I'm going to use the one that has an X, Y, Z. You can just have an X, Y. You can have an X, Y, Z. So immediately I, I've created that node. As you can see, there's a, a point comes in there, right? But the first yeah. point we're going to use, it's not going to have any coordinates. So there. So I'm just going to leave that one out and just copy Control C, Control V, and paste another point, right? So the next point is going to be raised um, for our form. So if I just show the preview again, so th that that point is going to host the bigger circle on top. So the first point is going to host the circle at the bottom of the shape. Okay, I'm going no, to. That's already again. interesting. It's not like grasshopper where you can move the same point in the original one stage. You have to create a new one for the moved one. Because in Grasshopper, you'll create that point point at the bottom, and you know, then you'll mm. tell it to move, but the original one still stays, you know? So you've got two instances, even though you started with one point. Uh, but yeah, you're actually okay. creating two points, eh? so it works slightly differently yeah. in that way, it seems. Yeah. Huh. No, I think it works the same. Okay, well, the let's, same? Just, let's, okay let's, let's just yeah, let's carry on. Let's, yeah. let's just um, carry on and let's see him here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this here so this this here is a number slider mm -hmm. right um you you have that in grasshopper Gross. as well yeah. pretty much works the same way i'm just going to copy and paste um you're going to use that but if you want to find that as well in the in the search you just go number mm -hmm. slider very easy just and it just pops there okay great um so then i'm just going to add a z I'm going to add a Z coordinate to that point. And as you can see, as I add, when I add a Z coordinate, we can then change the height of that point. Let me just zoom out a little bit so we can see it properly. So that gives it a Z coordinate. If I give this to the X as well, obviously, it also gives it a X coordinate. But all, we, all I want for this is just keep it simple. We're going to keep it around the origin. And yeah, just give it a height like that. Okay, so is it similar to Grasshopper yet or different? Moment, so? yeah. Okay, great. So now I want to add circles to this point, right? Mm. Um, so um, this the point here outputs at the end, similar to Grasshopper. You've got the inputs in front and the output at the end. So then I'm going to take look for a circle mm. by center point and radius. Right. And then when I get the point, yeah, I just put it in there. A circle gets created, but it is pretty tiny at the moment. So we have to find, I'm just going to grab this um, dimension, this number slide over here as well. Control C, Control V. Let's go there and paste that and um, yeah, attach that. And then when I change the dimensions there, the radius of the circle changes as well. Okay, following still? Yeah, all good. Okay, so I'm, then, I'm gonna copy this again, Control C, Control V, and then add that point, the top point over here, and another circle gets created. And then I'm gonna copy this as well, and I'll rename it to radius two. Let's see, let's call it let's call it top radius. So if you double click on this top panel, you can rename any node, even this default node, right? <laughs> um, and I'm call this bottom radius. Radius. Great. And in general, just to make my graphs neat. And so I, so I don't get confused because they get pretty big. Um, um, I like to put my nodes on the on the left hand side, and then also group them and call that inputs. Just remove. So you can also add a description here, but uh, I don't need that. And I like to 
just my color style just make make it gray whatever is an input so i, I know this is an input um, and it's easy to follow cool so now i can attach this top radius over here and i can make it larger than the one at the bottom okay perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let me know if you have um you can interrupt me if you're getting confused okay Okay. So now we've we've created our circles and now we need I need points along the along the circumference of both circles right um the reason I need those points I'm going to show you this again um preview it's going to get a little confusing here the reason I need those points is that this sine wave over here right um, it needs a direction and that it needs a vector. It needs multiple vectors and those vectors need two points. So the, the method I've used is to create two points and that, that allows the sine waves um, dimensions to be, to move in that direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The following. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Great. Okay. So now I'm going to make those points. And the method to do that is curve dot point at parameter. So then I'm just going to go in here, curve dot point at parameter. Okay. Then I'm going to attach this to the circle. Right. Um, I know. In Grasshopper, to divide a curve, you basically use, I think it's divide. It's a node called divide, is it? It is right? one, yes, mm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but in Dynamo, th this is, you need to add points at parameter. So, curves, I'm getting messages here. <laughs> curves are, um, every curve has a zero mm -hmm. as at its beginning and one at its end, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the same for surfaces, um, but I'll, yeah. I'll just explain curves now. So if you wanted to divide a curve into, let's say, 50 parts, you wanted 50 points along the curve, you need to create, you need to divide one, the number mm -hmm. one, into 50, right? Yeah. Okay. And the way to do that is you need to have a range mm -hmm. of numbers. And a, a range in range in Grasshop, I think, is a you use the domain um, domain node to to divide there, that there's a range, share range node as well um but yeah yeah so. yeah so what i'm going to do here i'm going to show you two ways of doing it so i'm going to give you these i'm going to show you multiple ways of doing things as i go along so i'm trying to make it as comprehensive as possible so if i use a code block some design script and i say zero dot dot one dot dot hash 50 right and i open the list here so there's a list when you click at the bottom there you can see from zero there is 50 numbers obviously a list always starts mm -hmm. at zero i mean coding and it's same in grasshopper then all the way to one right so those are the numbers, those are the parameters you're going to use to divide these circles into, if we have 50 parts, it's going to be 50 there, right? So you can also use range, right? So basically the start to be zero. Then if I double click here, I can make, I can in the code block type a number. So I like this because it's much faster instead of finding a node, right? That's, I like design script because you can quickly make, can quickly type code in instead of using a, using a node. And it, I think it does run faster as well. Mm. Okay, that, then. That code block notation, would that be similar in Python? Because obviously it's something I don't normally use. Or is that no, it's different. a script language? Is so it, this is yeah. design, design, design script. It's a language in itself. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So then I can start from zero and enter one as the end and the step is basically if i make that 50 would that be the 
Let me see. Let me see if I'm right here. Um, no, the step is not 15. Hmm. I'm getting something mixed up here. Step, let me see. Five. Lacing longest. You see why I don't use nodes? Okay, um, I'll just move on from here. But essentially, you can use a range. I think I'm just using the wrong node here. Range. But essentially, there's a node. I think it is this one, but um, just so I don't waste time trying to figure stuff out. Um, but essentially, you can use range as well instead of using this notation, right? I'm just going to delete mm -hmm. this for now. Okay. Okay. So, um, but I, I want to be able to change this parameter over here, the number of points. So I'm going to make this an X, a variable. So what that allows, and you can see it gives me an error here because it can't compute this anymore. So what does it allows now is I'm going to look for an integer slider. So not number slider anymore, because I want whole numbers instead of like a point. 4.2 or so I want an integer. And if I click down here, I want a minimum of two points because less than, I think less than two might give you an error. So you obviously don't want to divide it less than that. The maximum I'll leave it as 100. The step is basically, um, if I'll illustrate here, if I say five, it you see the numbers jump in increments of five, right? But I want I want the increments to be in ones. So sorry, I'm just gonna have to enter there. I want the increments to be in ones. So I'm just gonna leave the step as one. Okay. So here, I'm just gonna leave that here. I I can rename this to um, divisions or something like that. Divisions. Okay, then I'm going to take this in here. And you see it's giving me 29 numbers, but um, I want, I'm going to make it 50. Okay, and I'm going to add this input to the group. There's also my inputs are nice and tidy. So let me just move this away from here. Okay, just move that over there. Okay, are you still following? Uh-huh. All good. Okay. Yeah. Just got a pop up yeah. saying we've got 10 minutes, so I'll probably have to just send out another oh, invite if we get cut off. Yeah, sorry. It's uh... <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Then we'll just have to stitch the video together. Yeah. Somehow. Okay. So then I then connect this over here. And as you can see, some points got created mm. at the bottom curve. Okay. All right. Um, I could pair these curves together, these two circles, and have them um, create, I can create points along both of them. But the thing is, um, it's for me, it's just, um, it's easier to do the vectors because vectors need a start point and an end point. And so in terms of the, um, the structure of the script, it will make more sense for me to separate them, right? Mm. So you can you can make a list. You can combine the two circles into a list. So if you if you use a, sorry, let me just delete this. If you use the list dot create, yeah. right? You can combine them. You you push on this plus sign. You can go and combine them like that, right? And you put the curve in there. And but there's a thing called in in um, in Dynamo, there's a thing called lacing. You've got to use the, sorry, you've got to use the cross product. So cross product, just explain that. Shortest is basically, if you had a list that was had two elements and you had a list that had three elements, it will connect, it will use the shortest list and connect, take the first two items in the, 
I, um, the list that has three elements and connect those two, connect the first two to the, the, the first two in the list that has three elements. Is that clear? clear. Yeah. Mm. yeah i think okay. crossover is a similar, similar yeah. concept mm. Like, yeah. Mm. yes yeah it's the same and there's the longest lacing it's going to connect the it's going to use the list with the longest um the most items as priority right and connect um connect everything um the last um elements in in the longest list to the last element in the shortest list okay mm. The cross product, the cross product connects every single element to each other, right? Mm. Right. So basically, I've got it's a it's a it's a bit of a difficult concept to understand, but if you've used Grasshopper, you you should get it. Um, basically, I've got um, what's it here? I've got fifty um, um, parameters here. Right, mm. and I want all those parameters to be connected to the two circles, right? Mm. So that's why I use the cross product. Mm. So it allows it allows that. So, but that's not what we're going to be doing here. Mm. So that's that's just me going on a tangent, so you understand something else. <laughs> um, then I'm just going to connect there, and I'm going to copy this again. Let me know when it's about to go off. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it will um, keep the video. Yeah, it, it, it says you're five minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to take this circle as well and connect it in here. We can share the same parameters. We'll share the same parameters so they, so when I change the divisions here, they all respond. That's, that's, yeah. For me, that's the power of uh, computational design, right? You can iterate and test and use the same exactly. script on different projects with different dimensions. So, yeah. Exactly. So you can see that, yeah. So I can change that radius as well. Um, mm. Similar to Grasshopper works the same mm. way. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, great. Um, but the thing about Dynamo, I don't like, you know, it's not, it's not well suited for these kind of operations, right? It, it is so slow. Oh, you would, if you use that. it, you will understand. Mm -hmm. So just making some points, you know, it already starts to, you know, you, already, you can already feel it like slowing down just, you know, from a few points like this. I mean, it can, hand, it can handle this, but if you, try, if you try it out in Grasshopper, it's just smooth, you know, it doesn't even think about it, right? Yeah, but uh, hopefully they improve on that. Okay, so... Then the next thing now, we've made our circle points. Now the next thing is to make the vectors. Okay, so to make the vectors, we need vector dot by two points. Okay, so there's vector by coordinates and there's another vector by coordinates there, normalized. So to normalizing a vector means to make it into a uh, single unit, basically like a one. Right? Zero to I one. think you have, yeah, you have that in in Grasshopper as well. Yeah. Okay, so vector by two points. Gonna go over there. Um, then pick the first point. So I want the vector to go from the bottom to the top, right? Because um, as you remember, I show this preview here. The sine wave is kind of pointing upwards. Oh, they, uh, it probably doesn't matter, but I, yeah, it just logically makes sense for me to just have it going from the bottom to the top, right? Positive values make sense, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm just going to take that point here and do that. So, just to illustrate, I think I'll make a line by two points so you can see how it looks because the vector is obviously invisible. Yeah. Lined up by start point, end point. So then I'm just going to take this point here, start point and end point. As you can see, those are the lines created at those points. So the vectors are basically representing um, those lines. Okay, so we've got our vectors. Next step. Okay, so the next step now is to create uh, 
basically create the math for our sine wave. Okay. And so the I'm for this, I prefer, I just really prefer to use design script. You know, I I would hate to go get a math.sign. You know, you, you can do a math.sign over there. Um and then you then need you'd still need other you know in other information within that um another node for the other um components as well so this is just for me it's just simple i'll just take this over here um this ds core what happens is when you bring in um, packages from other creators and there's this error that it happens called a namespace error. If those packages have the same namespace as the um, default packages um, names, like math, for instance, um, Dynamo gets confused. So you have to say it's the Dynamo script cores math dot sign you want to use, right? But if you're using the if you're using the node itself, right? It, that won't be an issue because it knows, okay, this is a Dynamo node. So I'm just going to copy this over here. Control C. And I'm going to paste that in a code block. Yeah, I see it's one okay. minute left. So I'm, we pro I'm probably just going to end it now and then we can okay. log back in if that's fine. Thanks. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's fine. Let's do it. Yep. All yes. good. Perfect. Okay, so we stopped at this. Uh, this way, it gets a little tricky. Okay, so the we stopped over here. Um, so we've got. Let me just drag this over here. Okay, so the the cycles basically in that um, block of code basically refers to the amount of sine waves that, that's being created. So like a 360 wave. So the mm. sine, a sine wave obviously does that. Mm. That is a 360. Mm. So one cycle represents the one 360 motion, right? Mm. So I've got, at the moment, I've got five over here, right? So I'm just going to plug that five into there, right? And then I'm going to take the number of points as well. So as you can see in here, where's that number? So that number as well is plugged into that sign that that formula there. So I'm just going to take the number of divisions as well and plug it in there. Okay. Then it creates a a list of numbers of 59 numbers that have been worked out that, that we're going to use to create the sine wave, right? Okay. Following still? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering why it's 59 now, but I think it's finished. Okay, <laughs> we can come back to okay, that. Okay, so, okay, yeah. so it's here. Over here, yeah. it's 59. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I thought you worked okay. with 50 points before, so I was just wondering why. Okay, it's now I can. I, no, no, it doesn't, I, doesn't I just, matter. Okay, you, you just change it. No worries. I'll yeah. make it 50. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll make it 50 for clarity. Yeah, okay. Sure. So I just, I just, I just, I, I was just changing it the other time. Uh, okay. Um, cool. All right. So the next step is to, um, so the next thing now is to map the those values we've gotten for the sine wave to actual val actual um real oh, world values mm. um no, no so like so i want uh. if i if i show this preview again mm. i want to be able to say if you share i want to be able to give this the wave a height right mm. so i want it to maybe be about two meters tall or if if you know imagine a building you you, yes. you wanted an entrance to be a sine wave right you yeah. want to you want to be able to say that sine wave should be maybe five meters yeah. the 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 values the sign the sign formula gave us aren't really helpful so we have to map those values to actual sure. real world values right okay. so that's the next step makes makes sense yeah okay so 
to do that, we need to, we need to get the minimum item from the list, and we also need to get the maximum item from that list we've created. So in this list now, I'm gonna go list dot minimum item. So from this list, I get that minimum item. So it shows me that as the minimum item minus 0.99, okay? So that means it's the lowest point of the wave. Then I'm gonna get the maximum item as well. Okay, so that's the, that is the top of the wave and the bottom is minus 0.99, okay. So let's just follow the steps, okay? So now you need to map those points, um, those, um, um, those values you've got, right? From the sine wave formula, you need to map it to the actual height values of the actual real world height values that I spoke about previously, <laughs> okay? So, um, let me just, I'm just going to copy this as well. So I've got a, some, a value here called minimum translation. That is the minimum, um, the minimum height of the sine wave. And I've also got a maximum height here. So I'm going to copy it here. Control C, Control V. Okay. Then if you look here as well, we've got a, I'm going to hide the preview of this. We've got a math.map2, which is a Dynamo node as well. Math.map2. Okay. So what that basically is going to take is that the minimum value we just, we, we, we got from the, the sine formula the maximum value, then the input values is our entire list and the target, which is the real world value, min, and the target max value. Okay. So this is essentially doing um, like an equivalent of the remap in, in Grasshopper, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be it. Mm -hmm. I haven't used that in Grasshopper, but I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> you telling me what it is because <laughs> I, I want to I want to repeat everything I've done here in grasshopper that's how I that's how I will learn um yeah the equivalent mm. okay so oh sorry I'm not meant to put this over here because I don't want to get confused now I'm just going to put my inputs over here okay so I'm going to take this max just plug it in there then I will take this min and plug it in here and take our input values. Plug it in there and take the minimum item there and also the maximum item here. Okay, so now it's remapped those values as you can see here, let me just bring them together. Our 50 numbers over there, over here, have been remapped. So now that zero has become an eight, right? Um, the lowest number over here has become an eight as well. Okay, so it's it's basically transformed these numbers into the numbers we can use to then create our actual wave, right? Okay, mm. so let's find out what the next um, step is over here. Okay, so now what we can actually do is translate. In Dynamo, translate means move. I can't remember what it's called in Grasshopper. It's move, just move. It's just move in yeah. Grasshopper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, they use all these <laughs> weird terms. Why, yeah. is, why isn't it just called move? Yeah. So translate in Dynamo is move, right? Yeah. That is what move is. So yeah. we can find here a geometry dot translate okay um so it needs so you don't take this one you don't take that one you take this one you need because we have a vector, a vector. right mm -hmm. 
and we have a distance. So we're going to use a vector and a distance. Okay. I'm just curious about your input. So you generally tell it what you're busy with. So you're busy with geometry and then dots, and then you're giving it uh, the command that you want to perform on that type of yes, geometry. So if, it, so if it was a point, you would have typed in point dot translate. Basically. Uh, no, 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 no. Right. So point is point is geometry. Yes. Right. So, so which is what I'm doing. Point is geometry. Oh, I see. So got it's, it. Yeah. it's going to, yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm thinking of like a B a rep or something, but yeah, no. I get, oh, get yeah. It. So B, a, B, a B rep would also be geometry. So you, yes. um, yeah. There's a container yeah, for everything, translate. basically. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. So yes, in, in Grasshopper, there is quite a, there's a d differentiation between things like that. Yeah. So there's mm. a point container. Um, there's like text container if i recall correctly yeah. um yeah so but but for this you geometry point mm. um a surface uh poly surface anything, a line. Basically. yeah anything that's geometry that's got um that you can see um mm. yes it's you you can translate okay so what we want to translate is the top points, we can do it as well for the bottom, but I'll just keep it simple. We want the top points. So those top points, I'm going to click. And if I click here, you can see it, it gets highlighted. So you can see if you get confused at what the top point is, what the, mm. but that's why for me, it's important to also when a graph gets big, this, one, this graph is very small, um, but when your graph gets really big, it's good to group things together. Mm. So now I for this one, I could say, points right um circle center points or something like that so you know mm. next time you come back because at this mm. at this point i've probably got over 300 dynamo, dynamo graphs and mm. coming back to a graph i did two years ago i was <laughs> absolutely confused if mm. i didn't do this you know or working um, in a team as well so yeah exactly so someone else can come and when you leave an office someone else can come in and you know mm. change the graph as well modify it um and you can also leave notes as well. So <clears> also, which is also good. Um, okay, so what was that? Where was I? So I was on the points. So this points over here, you can see the preview. I'm just going to take that point and plug it into geometry. We also need the vector. So this vector over here, <clears throat> I'm going to take that as well, plug it in there. And we also have the distance, which is this plug that in there okay then if i zoom out um it's not very clear but we mm. can play around over here so let's see what the values are here can you see that yeah absolutely so you, so you can see mm. the wave has gotten created mm. okay so now to um the so the, the hard part is done. So now you want to create a surface out of your out of your points. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the first thing you need to do is create a knob nerves curve. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Um, so I'm gonna create a nerves curve over here. So I'm gonna look, do a search over here. So nerves curve. Um, I'm gonna make it a nerves curve by control points gerald just send us uh okay yeah i was referring to you annotating your scripts okay <laughs> okay sir um i think this one is probably the one where i need okay that's it i don't need this one so this option this one lets you um s decide if you want to close the curve or not but i want to close it so i'm not going to i'm just going to use this one and the degree, I don't know if this is also available in Dynamo. Yeah, it is. Okay, degree. Okay, so you understand what that is. Yes, yeah. I said in Dynamo, in Grasshopper. Mm. Um, yeah. Will it, will it also be, if it's degree one, it's basically going to be a polyline that it just serves yeah, jagged edges. Yeah. Well, I can, sh let's actually, let me show mm. you. Um, Was it zero? I still get conf confused by the different points. types. Yeah. yeah, so if I say degree, um, can you say degree one? I wonder. 
I think so. Then it was okay. You can okay. So yeah. you can see here yeah. straight lines. Yeah. Preview. Yeah. So degree one. It's pretty fine. There are a lot of points. So it's hard to see, but mm. as you can see, yeah, it's quite jagged, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that's not what we want. We want a smooth curve. Mm. And I'm just going to show the preview again. Um. So that's our sine wave. So now we want a loft. Mm. So. It's the same um, term in Grasshopper as well. Yeah. So I'm just going to say surface dot by loft. Okay. Then it's going to ask you for cross sections. But to loft between the, the, that curve and the bottom circle, you need to create a list. You need to combine them into a single list. Okay. Um, which I think you do in Grasshopper as well. Um, so then... I'm going to create a list here, list dot create. All right. Then I'm going to take our NURBS curve and I'm going to find the bottom circle. So it's that one. Take that one and put it in there. And then take this list and put it in there. And now we have our surface. But then I'm going to I'm going to hide the lines. Where are those lines? Yeah. Hmm. Remove the preview. I think in, in Grasshopper that would probably be a merge that you merge more than one line. Yes, yes. That is merge, yeah. That is merge. And so now we have our surface. And as you can see, it's Great. moving the sine wave the sine wave moves in the direction of our vector hmm. as well. Yeah. And you can play around with it with your inputs. As you can see, it's I don't know if you can tell, but it's slow. It's a little slow. Just this. Yeah, this. it does feel a bit jagged. Now we can add we can add more mm. curves like more that. peaks. Mm. Yeah, more peaks. I wanted to make it a little more interesting. I wanted to take this into Revit. I don't know if you have. I don't know if Gerald's still going to show us something at this rate. Um, yeah, I, I think I can. I can just try to rebuild. Okay. I, I want to try okay. and follow the same logic that you used. Okay. Um, I would like that. See. Okay. But what I wanted to do is also add, um, quadify the surface, change okay. it into quads, <laughs> and then bring that into uh, Revit as adaptive components. Uh -huh. So basically you pan panelize it, so yes. imagine this was uh, some sort of a structure you wanted. Um, it's mm -hmm. I don't know what structure. I don't know what this would be. Um, but you wanted to make it out of panels. You can mm -hmm. then send those um, send this surface into Revit as adaptive components. Mm -hmm. You can also export the surface into Revit, but it's a little tricky. Um, so you need sure. you can either export it as a direct shape. A direct shape is absolutely useless. I wouldn't mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. Um, nah, probably that's, most that's like, atrocious. <laughs> yeah, it most likely make your file. <laughs> corrupt or yeah i mean just it's ugly um but you can also use springs which which is why um i like i like that package there's a node called family instance um oh, by cool. geometry then you it makes it into a family and then puts it in your project so if you go into the family um window family <clears throat> environment you can also give it a material um <clears throat> yeah so that's so you know that's the point of bim so you can also assign things mm. to it you can give it properties yeah, with a direct with a direct shape it's just useless you know mm. you can't use it for anything um yeah so i'm does going it, to just there's a quick question on that i know we've, we've been actually going for a while now um but um those panels can you also choose shapes like in um, grasshop you've got that lunchbox uh, plugin which gives you options yeah. for hexagons and triangles and and or in any shape basically yeah yeah so um, what I've done in the past, if I want a unique shape, mm. a unique pattern, I actually make that pattern myself. Oh, wow, so what okay. you do is you you make the pattern on a flat surface mm. and you map the coordinates of the the mm. corner points of the the pattern onto yes. the surface you the the target surface. So mm. that that's that's how those panelization mm. um, packages or plugins I think work. That's the logic Great. behind them. Yeah. So if you wanted to make something special, that's how to do it. Do but it. there are people have made um, pl plugins for that. I'm sure. So, um, 
yeah so i'll show i'll show you one of the ones i use now um, so i'm just gonna make this neater i'm gonna make a less cycles you know it's just so it's simpler um yeah okay so there is a package it's a very random package um where is it here it's called lin package um but i've already put it over here so i'm just going to copy this pattern rectangle to surface so it's made by this lady she does a lot of crazy objects i i saw her on so on youtube um i just <laughs> found out she has a package so i just copied it and uh, just downloaded it and use it yeah so th she has hex there's hexagons as well circles i mm. think in the package but i'm just going to make this one a simple rectangle yeah. and just another question if you use adaptive yeah. components do you use do you need do you export points to to rivet or panels or how, how do they work so the adaptive mm. components use the point edge points of the panels yeah um yeah i'll but you i think you'll oh, we'll probably see it now okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna reduce it to 30 um because the last time i did i did 100 and my computer was uh not very happy <laughs> not happy <laughs> okay um so then we need a surface i'm just gonna drag this over here oh so i'm just drag this here so obviously I can make this a parametric thing as well. Mm. Um, like a slider. I'm just going to, yeah, a slider, but I don't want to, I'll just stick to 30. Mm. Um, I don't really want to play with Dynamo and that uh, goes nuts. Okay, so I'm going to unfreeze this. Mm. And when I unfreeze it, it's going to run. Um, so let's wait for that. We're going to make a cup <laughs> so you of can tea. See, <laughs> you can see how, you can see how <laughs> slow yeah but this should this should not take too long oh, but, you, yeah. but you can see how in in grasshopper it's instantaneous mm. right oh just it about just, yeah just goes immediately mm. um but then then i can hide the surface mm. and i can also hide the nerves curve um why is it not hidden oh sorry because it's in a list okay and i can also hide the points Okay, so we can appreciate the surface. So now you can see it's panelized mm. over there. And it also comes with, if you look here, it's got points at the corners, mm. right? So basically this node returns a dictionary of values, right? Mm. Um, so it's got a dictionary of values. So it's got surfaces for each panel. It's got polygons. So the polygons are basically um, the panels are surfaces. The polygons are basically the the poly curve of the of the panel, and it's also got edge points. So the edge points are what in, um, of interest to us, right? Mm. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna look for a node called adaptive components by points. Okay. So I'm going to take the points over here. Okay. Then I'm going to look for family type, a family type node, mm. family type. Does Dynamo also speak to your open rivet model so that it goes and fetches the families there or is it totally independent? Yes, Okay. precisely. So okay. if I look for the family type now, So you just need to find that node. Okay, no, that's the wrong node. Oh, oh flip. <laughs> Such a mission. Okay, so family types. There we go. Uh, I'm going to delete that. So there's a family I added just before this meeting. I'm going to look for it. It's got a BPAS in it. Yeah, so I made it previously um so it's just a square adaptive component it's got four points at its corner um so you need to make sure the pattern matches the number of points you're trying to create or else it's not gonna work so if um, you had a family of three points would you have to divide your um four surface into two basically to two triangles yeah. okay yeah so let me just go into revit here 
So this thing is very tiny. Uh, <laughs> so you can see it. It it has a preview in Revit as well. You can have, hide this preview yeah. um, if you don't want to see it in Dynamo. And then let's see family type. Oof, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's going to run. I've got a good feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should work. Uh, it's not yeah. nothing too serious. Okay. So obviously you can, you know, the family, I, I just made it a square, but the family yeah. could have patterns in it. Maybe you want yeah. a circle, an aperture in it with a with glass, yeah. or I don't know what else you want in it. Or you want it to be a pyramid yeah. or something like that. Or you want it to be a, a rev, rev, the Revit um, adaptive components doesn't, Okay, no, it actually does. If you want it to be like a bubble shape, maybe like those um, ETFE um, mm. things. Yeah, so you can yeah they can be well. quite three-dimensional. Eh? I've seen somebody yeah, do, so, do stuff like that. And yeah. then if you want to randomize things, some panels get bigger and smaller, things like that. Can you yeah, do that as you well? Can, you can. Yeah. Ooh, okay, this is very thick. <laughs> <laughs> I could just... So this is... You know, the great thing about this is it's a parametric family in Revit, <laughs> right? So that yes. I've made. So I can then go in there and change the thickness of it. So it's a tile. I've made it as yeah. a tile because it's there's I'm trying to do a generative design script that lets people tile surfaces um, oh, with different cool. patterns and images, but it's in the back burner for now. Um <laughs> so I'm gonna make it uh the I'm gonna make it let's say not point uh, let's make it one mil. Right. So this parameter, they're tied. So maybe I should make it. Oh, I see. So it's, this object is very small. Um, I should, maybe I should have made it bigger, but it's fine. Um, then I'm just going to let Revit change all those. I don't know how many objects are in there. 50 multiplied by 50 is. 2,500. Yeah. So that's 2,500. Uh, yeah, it's processing. Yeah, that's yeah, so one. That's the, the, mm. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? No, no, I was just saying that's one of the scary things I've discovered with computational design. If you um, get, if your lists get out of hands, it becomes 50 times 50 times 50. And before you know it, you've yeah. got like so many elements. Oh, so it's actually 900. How did it drop? My math wasn't right. Okay, so but, uh, it's 900 elements. Um yeah, and great because you have a, a parametric family. You can then go ahead and modify it and change it to whatever else you want. Mm. Um, That's great. It. Mm. Yeah, so that is my spiel. Okay. Well, awesome. That's um, for me the good thing is just to get familiar with the interface as well and get a sense of the the commands. I mean, the workflow and the logic seems familiar, even though it's slightly different. You know, so. Mm, All good. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna stop. stop okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Wait. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. It's looking good. Uh, it's blank. So I don't. Yes. Know. All blank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's that's what's looking good. So um. Yeah. So I'm thinking. This All is good going to, to go. I should have said that. Eh? <laughs> it's going to follow probably a similar. Uh. Pro approach to what uh, Bayo was doing. Yeah. So I think we can start with our good cycle there. Yes. Um. So yeah. So you can, then... can you can you add the display like the description descriptive um nodes so I can just see. Uh, okay. uh, um, yeah. Good bifocals. Mm. I'm that, using sunglasses, which is similar. Um, yeah. I, I mean, on the display. Uh huh. Um, just beside view on the top panel. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If you draw oh, full right. names, the actual components. Okay. Oh, you mean this thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, okay, okay, great. Sorry about that. I, 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 I use icons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, icons are great. Yeah. yeah, just I'm just for yeah. people. To, but but to I think understand. I agree with you. Mm. It's just my default settings are on on icons. Okay, mm. so uh, I think we start off with a circle, and then we move that to 
um, a different height. So we will need definitely to 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 use a z vector. Vector, sorry. Yeah. So tell me if I'm moving too quickly, but um, no, I this think is I. Good. Okay. All right. So I'll just uh, get another slider into that. And then we define that motion and that geometry. So now we have our two circles. Um, let me get these guys far away from this guy. And then, yes. So I like my scripts, straight lines and stuff. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Is yeah, it Gecko is great for that. Yeah. Do you ever use Gecko, um, Gerald? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, this guy snapping Gecko here. Yes. Oh, geez, uh, mm. oh, great! I, I didn't know about that. Yeah, snapping Gecko. <laughs> so we want to find the centroid of the circle, so that we scale the circle above um, to make it a bit bigger than the one below. So now that we get that, we can then scale it. And we would need to scale this geometry and scale it at the centroid. And then we throw in a factor there for scaling. So for now, I could just say 2.5, um, just so that it's bigger than the other one. So I'm just going to throw that here with the other sliders. Um, okay. Bio gave us a good introduction of being organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so all inputs. Inputs. <laughs> all inputs come to that point. So I'm just going to, I don't need to change that. And then uh, I don't like my wires to be too dense. So okay. what I normally do is I just, do that and then I drag this to the component where I want it to be. Okay. Right. So I'm going to turn off the preview on this so that we just have these two guys. And then, yeah, we are good to go there. Uh, we can play around with. So here the sizes are connected. Um, yeah. So what I could do is then um, divide this all into like a number of points. So for that, uh, we do divide curve. So this guy, this component, we find it under the curve parameters division there. Mm. And then we just make two copies of that. And what we are going to do is to then take this curve and divide it into that um, whatever number of points and then do the same for the other curve. And then, um, so maybe for now we could say, um, let's divide, just work with 50, right? So that becomes mm. the count for both. And mm. we bring this guy to his, friends there um as usual um that's just my my way of organizing my scripts so this is the one that i'll take and then throw it to these guys yep awesome so now we have these curves um so now we have the divisions on the curves Mm. And then, uh, so what? What I would, I think what what I would try and make it similar to what we we're doing earlier is to try and um, like evaluate these these curves. Um, actually, first, we, what what we can do is maybe we can create a line between the two. Okay. So yeah. that we 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 have these lines, and then we are going to establish like that sine wave on some points on these curves. And then we just use the second, the, the interpolated points to then create the new, the, the new sine wave. 
the age of that. Okay. So um, for us to do that, um, so there's a component called point on curve, which basically once you throw it into any curve, it gives you that parameter okay. on 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 the on the curve. Yeah. Basically, point at parameter and dynamo yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the cousin. Um, okay. I see we have three minutes left now. So, um, yeah. Good luck to me. <laughs> I don't think you're going to finish. So let's evaluate the curve. Um, and for us to do that, I think it's important to then reparameterize it so that we always know that it's starting from zero to one. Okay. And then these are the points. The points that we'll get here on a certain parameter of this curve are the ones that we're going to then use to, to interpolate into our our cave of interest, I can say. So for us to do this, I think now we have to rebuild the same, similar to the math that we're doing. Um, we can use a graph mapper. And then on our graph mapper, what we need is we're going to remap it eventually. So I want to remap these values uh, and turn them into parameters on those curves. Mm. So uh, we then need to start off with a range. And this range is going to need the same number of steps as the number of points that we have. So we take that in there. But you see um, here, I think on the number of points we have 50. And uh, when we use this range, we get 51. So we can then put a custom expression there to reduce that by one, so that it also gives us 50 points, 50 okay. divisions. Yeah, so you see there we have 0 to 49. So fun times. Why, why, why does it give us more though? Sorry. Um, so it's just the, the, I think it's the architecture of the components. Mm. So when, okay. you, when you give this uh, 50, 50, when you give this uh, range component, yeah, see, so it, 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 it requests for a domain in the number of steps, right? Yeah, yeah. But for, for this one, I think it doesn't do the zero indexing. So if you take that same number as it is, 50, mm -hmm. and you create 50 steps, it means it creates for you 51 intervals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because for, for one step, you need two end, a start point and an end point. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's always one extra added uh, additional point. Okay, I think I can stop here because I'm seeing that um, we are. Should we try again, or is this Zoom going to not allow us? Can we log in and out? No, I think so, yeah. Okay, let's can, finish this. I'm quite try. curious to see how you do it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's, I'm going to stop recording now again. Okay, so you can see my where we yes. left off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, now I think I was, exp I was just explaining this aspect. So um, by default, when, when you are creating a range and you um, specify the number of steps, the component is going to give you exactly that amount of intervals. So mm. if you need one interval, you need at least two points to reference, the start point and the end point. So there's always one additional point. That's why okay. this, if we use this, um, the number of divisions that we created on the curves and we take that 50 in, then we get 51, um, a range of 51 numbers because it always starts from, it always concludes the, the last step. Yeah. So okay. to ensure that you always have the same number, you then have to make, like subtract this by one, and then you know that you are going to get again 50, 50 numbers for the range. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so at this point, what we can then do is, um, so we throw that in there, and then uh, I think we we had the number of cycles that we were working on in, in, in Dynamo, just mm. like the number of the number of peaks that we would want. 
So it becomes uh, this domain. So how many times are you going to complete this operation, the cycles that you're going to take? And then we get our graph type here, which is the sine wave. Oh, jeez. That is so much easier. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but this sine so wave is better. starting from the top to the end. So we want it to, con to be a full revolution. So we just have to bring that oh. to that point. Then it's a complete sine wave. Um, and then, um, so if you remember, I think when we did the, the point the point on curve um, on these lines. Um, so one is actually at the, the, the points at the top and zero the points at, at the bottom. Mm. So um, we can then sort of guess at this point to say maybe we want our sine wave to start at around, let's say 0 0.6 or whatever that value is. It focus only on this upper part of the of the shape so that is defined by the by this target domain which becomes what we are translating this onto so we're now remapping uh these these values if we throw out a panel here we'll see that we already have a value of uh 50 50 numbers um ranging from yeah so this is mm. basically just the reparameterization of, of, of this um, mm. scale of this graph. So now we then define the target that we want on this range uh, of these points from zero to, to, to one. So for us to do that, uh, we construct a domain. And then, uh, we say maybe we want to start from, I don't know, 0 0.6. And we want to end at 1. Or well, let's say 1.2, just to, to to be funny. Uh, but I don't want it to go that far, become extreme. So maybe let me say the maximum is 1.2. Yeah, like that. So you can actually do that. It's going to project off the curve then, eh? because it's uh, 0 to 1. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to jump off the off the curve or beyond um, in the mm. same vector. Yeah. Mm. So let's maybe make it zero point nine before for now, and then this is our target domain. And then so these now remapped figures become our new uh, parameters. Yeah. So oh. we get uh, those points. Yeah. Why why don't you need a source there, um, Joel? So uh, oh, yeah. So the source by default is zero to one. Oh, and I see. So actually, of course, our yeah. origin here is also zero to one. To one. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not it's mm. not really a prerequisite, but yes. um, in some it, it now depends with on it depends on how you are using this guy. So sure. in some instances, you have a specific source domain that you yeah. mm. want because, to use. Yeah. Okay. No, I got it. Mm. Yeah. So if we go to one point one, you can see that the points are going. Off, mm. like above, yeah. above that. Which is quite yeah. cool. I like it. <laughs> yeah. That graph map, I've seen it used before. It's very, very cool. Um, yeah, it's powerful. You can, you can, yeah. yeah, it's so powerful. You, you have several types there. Can I see those, yes. those types? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Busy, so you have several iconic. types. Yeah. Yeah. So right. it allows you to, yeah, you can pick quite a number of them. Uh, we get the polyline. So let me. Let me hide these other many points, which we don't need to to see. And let me just bring back the, the the circles. Yeah, and then we can oh maybe we can keep those, but definitely we don't need to see those. Yeah. So um, now this is where it gets interesting, because some some of these graphs won't really work mm. uh, or they do work but they're going to give you some funny results <laughs> okay so, yeah so here it was specific that we were looking for a sine wave because mm. that's just what we are out here looking for mm. so you can get some uh to work uh with a few tweaks and turns you can make stuff work um 
but then you have to negotiate what happens at the end there. So this becomes purely a function of the mathematical equation of the type of curve that you're using or the type mm. of graph you're using. Yeah. Mm. So let's see the sine summation. So this is like a bunch of sine waves added up together. So this one does work. It's close to the one that we're using already. And you can mess around with it and yeah, do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if there's another decent curve. Sigmoid should work. Oh yeah, it gives us that because it starts from zero to one. So it gives us that weird, mm. um, yeah. So maybe oh. not so great. Um, parabola is going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you actually okay. want something that starts at zero and ends at zero again, right? So so, yes, or, yeah. so, or, so or, or one yeah. for that matter. Yeah. yeah, so I think it just depends on some of it comes with a bit of experience in using mm -hmm. in using mm -hmm. the, the the graph mapper. Mm -hmm. Um and then you, you know the function that you're actually trying to, mm -hmm. to work with. I mean yeah. I mm -hmm. guess it, it depends on what you're trying to go so, for. I mean sometimes you don't want it to connect. Um yeah. with the sine wave, obviously you do want it to connect, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, that's great. Okay. That's great. So let's get back to our sine wave. Yeah. So now uh, we then have our our points there. And then what we then do is we just um, interpolate these. Just points. another beginner's question, uh, Gerald, on the graph mapper. Can you double click and set those values um, by double clicking, yes. okay. So the top, you can yeah. put it exactly at zero point five or wherever it needs to go. Yes, yeah. So okay. you could you could make this um, let's make that a two. So you see that coordinate oh, okay. is changing to to two. two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So mm. yeah. So okay. this this now is going to override what you specified here. Mm. Okay. Because you see here we have we have five cycles five cycles. Mm -hmm. But we've stretched it in the X, so it's actually effectively let's two say two and a half cycles. Yes. That's so what that's why it's on. not closed. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So let's um, do the sign mm. and yeah. So then after this point comes straight forward, we can interpolate these curves. Um and then yeah. The degrees we we're talking about earlier. Mm. But you, you also use the a NURBS curve, eh? In, in yeah, I use NURBS curve. Yeah, yeah. Mm. in 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 um, grasshopper, it's a much softer curve than they interpolate, so it will mm. be a much flatter result. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So yeah, and I think then from this point we we can then. Uh, I mean, we can do a whole bunch of things after this mm. point. Uh, we can decide to, we can mess around with this. This is looking like, uh, I think it's looking like a, you know, those things that they use to wrap cupcakes. Yes. Ah. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're making me yeah. hungry now. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. And I've had dinner, I'm not so, supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think then you can you can loft this. Um, so you have your two curves. So we have this first curve on the bottom, which is um, you can say bottom curve, yeah. right? Then you duplicate those guys just because you can manipulate the wires better than. Sure, yeah, like, okay. yeah. Mm. So I just do that so that I, yeah. I just send. I wonder. It to, I wonder. Does it make your graphs slower? I, I would be scared in Dynamo because um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm sort of it. It yeah, doesn't change see, anything. Mm. In Dynamo, I wouldn't want to duplicate my <laughs> notes. <no. laughs> yeah. yeah. So then this is the second one, and now we have our two curves. So normal, like how I write my scripts. Um, like you see, I, I get these guys, then I group them, then these are all my my inputs. Um, yeah. 
I also like grouping because the colors are quite helpful for seeing mm-hmm. what you're working with. Exactly. Yeah. All my groups are default white. Right. Okay. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> my canvas is white. Um, yeah. Then we take these guys too. And yeah, take these guys too. They come and they join the merry band. <laughs> and yeah. So um then when I get something like that, I group that these are this could be my my outputs at in interim outputs or something. Mm-hmm. Or I could just say final curves. Mm-hmm. Um then yeah. So are you guys all in there? No, we're here. We're here. We're here. Yeah. No, I mean, I meant <laughs> my components. <laughs> I, I was, one was the, the one, the one got <laughs> left behind. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, yeah. So these are the guys I preview. Um, then everything else here is previewed off, and then ah, so this What's guy that? is not closing. I forgot to close it. Oh yeah. So I need to. Toggle that okay. true, and then happy times. Mm. Yeah. So, awesome. um, so at this point, uh, we can then loft these two guys, but I I'm not a big fan of loft for a reason. I'm just going to show you now. So we then have to flatten that, and then we get mm. our cupcake uh <laughs> thing there. Um, awesome. but then you in the right the, color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing now is <clears throat> now depending with how this lofts are tricky things in Grasshopper and sometimes um, if you want to do we mentioned you were discussing how to like change this into adaptive components and you know <laughs> so post-processing mm-hmm. a loft can be tricky because the default workflow in Grasshopper is to deconstruct a B-Rep. So okay. when you deconstruct a B-Rep, you see that the loft now is going to give me um, these faces and these edges. It gives you edges. Okay. Faces. Yeah. Uh-huh. But now I'm getting... So I don't really understand um, how it decides to say these are the faces. Because this is just one surface in my mind. Mm-hmm. But now I'm getting four surfaces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I prefer mm-hmm. to actually use the the root surface mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then i just this one is much more predictable i know what i'm dealing with mm. i only recently so, discovered that root surface is quite powerful mm. Mm. yeah okay. i would have gone for a loft so I'm glad yes yeah <laughs> i mean mm-hmm. loft is such an intuitive thing to do yeah and i think uh in terms of computing time mm. i think this takes less time Mm. Um, let's just check. There's a good plugin called Meta Hopper. So mm. it allows you to, it gives you like the time it takes for every component. So by default, uh, like by default, you see this one is ticking six microseconds. Mm. So if you come under your settings and to canvas widgets, and then you add the profiler, the profiler mm. allows you to see those, uh, those computing mm. times, but some components don't. So there's this plugin called MetaHopper, which allows you to, to do that. And then it gives you all, all components, like their computing mm. times. So if we go to, like we can see that this deconstruct big rep is the one taking the most time. Well, why do you um, need that though? Just to check if there's a component that's taking really long and slowing down your whole script or? Is yes, it? Yeah. 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 Mm. So mm. scripts get really, really big. Um, mm. uh, of course. I, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. you, sometimes you want to see, so there are certain things that you can, for example, if you're going to use, um, in some cases, developing a B-Rep or a, a, a surface or extruding a surface, a, 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 a curve. If you mm. do an extrusion, it might take a lot of time. Um, and when you compare that to actually doing it manually and then creating a mesh, the mesh might take less time. So if you have mm. a very big script, um, you might need to maybe 
invest five minutes in figuring out how to mesh that instead of extruding it because it could easily bottleneck your yeah. your workflow so mm-hmm. if you're doing generative design and you are trying to test many iterations and then you have a big um especially components you find like you have extrusions and then these guys that you find under intersections these ones are terrible uh physical intersections or region intersections when you're trying to mm. split uh mm. b-reps with b-reps ctc it's just mm. going to yeah it just takes time and so albert just comes in. so you just just to add something just in general geometric operations um if you can avoid them um they just if you can go through another route um it saves you computational time um even in dynamo she's just mm. if you can make something um if you can make a, a line first by constructing vectors um instead of points or something then go for that because geometry just takes a lot of time yeah Interesting. So, so yeah so you see like this loft is taking four microseconds and mm-hmm. the root surface is taking one mm-hmm. so it's like big difference four yeah. times more mm-hmm. time you know yeah mm-hmm. so and then when you deconstruct this um you just get your one good surface mm-hmm. one face out of that and then you get your edges you get um yeah your three edges and then some vertices interestingly which are the seams i think of the curves yeah that's, so this is the scene of the top one mm, and the bottom one that also yeah. threw me before the the, the seam because i mean that that surface is really just something that's wrapped right and meeting on the on the starting mm. and ending edges and i tried to create mm. a pattern three-dimensionally and obviously on the seam it messed it up a bit so i, I think i had to create a mm. mesh first and then i could start repopulating things yeah that's interesting mm. yeah huh. yeah D- Dynamo so, has a leg up on this. <laughs> yes, no, I'm pretty sure. Grasshopper's got a few funny things or quirks, mm-hmm. you know, especially for you know, like me, like that thing about the the additional um, item that the graph mapper adds. The other day, I spent like an hour trying to figure out why is the list suddenly longer, you know? And yeah, yeah, I realized yeah. it's just that so, component. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I think if you, yeah, there's a good component uh, called a parameter viewer. Yeah, yes. I use it yeah. all the time. So that and guy, that guy, yeah, mm. that, that guy is really mm. helpful. And I find even for me as a beginner, like points list um, is, is very valuable because sometimes things don't work and then I wonder why. And then I list it and I realize the one list yes. is going one way and the mm. other one's going the other way. So the I have to flip that stuff <laughs> like that, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Grasshopper is a lot of debugging. Like, yeah. I mean, even like v- visual programming. 99% of the time you are just debugging your script. Yeah, so I'm thinking yeah. like when it's like this uh so yeah so there could be two ways to to sort of uh let's say bring it into a mesh. I think you mentioned making it uh quads mm. in the mm, other quads. exercise. Yeah. Mm. So I think if you play with the quad remesh um so first we have to take this and make it a mesh. That face. Mm. So we just make it a mesh. This is uh, a fairly new component, eh, Gerald? Is it from Rhino 7, the quadri mesh? I don't think uh, it existed before, uh, did it? Yeah, it's it's this is this is um it's a new group of components. Mm. And they've been increasing mm. bit by bit. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I saw I saw in Rhino 7 as well, they've included new I can't remember what they're called. Is it sub D's? Sub D's, yeah. Sub D's. Mm. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Uh, very cool shapes. Those, mm. yeah. And uh, mm. the quad remesh is generally a sub D in normal Rhino. So I'm assuming this is as well. Mm. It looks like it. So, or is it just a yeah, normal mesh? So, so it's uh, it's just, just a normal mesh. Okay. Um, and it tries to the best of its ability to try and create the mm. quads with proper valence. Mm. Um, yeah. And and is the seam so, gone now, um, Joel? Yeah, because now we are just it's, now it's just a mesh, yes. so we don't have those seams anymore. Because mm. that was it's, 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 that was yeah. when it was still in Antrim. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. I think this could be one way. 
Um, so you see, it's starting to take a bit of time, but it's expected. Um, and you can also add like remeshing settings and all those things. And yeah, mm. or the other um, way now, now this depends on how you want to handle the surface. So um, another way to do it would be to just use the typical ISO trim method. So we have the surface, and then this is the surface that we want to divide. Um, so we use divide domain squared because we're doing it in both axes. Mm. And then, uh, so this is the surface that we are creating a domain out of. And, I'm guessing um, this is how I did mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is similar to, to what you did. Mm. Yeah, this is similar to what you did. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we make this a bit more and then we throw that to the U count and the V count and then we take that and then we take that and then we mm. get this guy. Uh -huh. So and These now, are native crossover yeah. components. So it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. I've started mm -hmm. playing around with Lunchbox recently and I'm quite enjoying that. It's so simple, but so powerful. Yeah. So that does that. And this takes much less time to compare to uh, to meshing meshing that, yeah. Um, we can play around with this actually in in in, in with pufferfish. We can do a few things here. I'm thinking. Um, let's get you guys back up. So I'm thinking. I uh, think with pufferfish you can do like twin curves between two curves mm -hmm. so if we take these two curves um this becomes the first curve then this is the second curve then by default it just twins um in the in the, oh. in the middle oh. um so there's we can, a function like that in sorry there's a function like that in rhino itself here isn't there Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you, you can yeah. do that in Rhino too. Mm. So I'm thinking we can actually be fancy about this. And I love graph mappers. Sorry. <laughs> so let's throw one again for good measure. And we throw in a range. And then um, maybe let's just say 20 for now. Uh, throw in 20 numbers. 20 steps there. And then let's the domain is zero to one automatically. Yeah. The default of the range. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's zero to one. Mm -hmm. So let's make this um let's say the basic curve. Uh play around with it. Yeah. Let's see. Um and then we throw that in oh, the fixture. What you're doing. And mm. then now I'm starting to see this as a basket or, <laughs> or a <laughs> <bean>. <laughs> I don't know. A wire yeah. basket. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. It could be, yeah, or a trash can. <laughs> No, this is too nice for a trash can. <laughs> yes, I was thinking the same. <laughs> Interesting. So, mm. yeah, well, oh, we'll build some pipes in there. Mm. Yeah, I just are those, are those solid solid objects. These are just uh, extrusions. So, yeah, solid extrusions. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, you do yeah. not want to do that in Dynamo. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> you are you are I mean, you are testing your luck. <laughs> <laughs> it will do it. It will do it. But you better your computer better be strong. Time. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Joel, yeah. I, sh so I, I think... should should know this, but if you don't want a pipe, if you want like a square profile, how would you do that again? Would it have to be some sort of a sweep, or how would you create that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that would have to be then a, a sweep. Yeah. Um, mm. Like you would have to. To sweep the, you create the the, the, the section, the rail that yeah, the profile that you want, mm. and mm. then you you sweep it. So the important thing would be to to reparameterize these uh, these caves. So now we are not dealing with these caves anymore. We are dealing with these caves, mm. right? So let me switch this off. 
So these curves, we now have to reparameterize them to find, uh, let's say, a starting point. Mm. And then we, let's, let's just take one curve, for example. Um, so let's throw in a list, in a list item. item. Yeah, I find this is such a useful components when i discovered this my life changed <laughs> suddenly oh, to get the to get yeah. the first item <laughs> yes yeah or, yeah or any yeah. item you can yeah. index it so it's uh, yeah um, yeah so let's yeah. go for one which is it's pretty low i want anyway yeah. another thing that i noticed with dynamo it just seems like it's easier working with these lists because in grasshopper you know especially for beginning like me it's it gets really confusing you know <laughs> Yeah, oh, really? Like you think so? Yeah. No, I actually, I actually it think opposite? it's much, yeah. Um, okay. Because in Dy in Dynamo, even to flatten a list, yes, you need a you need a node for that, right? Uh, okay. In Grasshopper, you can do it right on the node. Oh, right? uh, that's true. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I prefer I prefer oh. Grasshopper. Okay. Yeah. It's just when you did yeah. that uh, connection of all your lists, it just seemed to automatically work without any issues, you know. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. Maybe may maybe you just get at what you're doing. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not yeah. simpler. Yeah. So once you get uh, in at any of these points, I just created like a like a number of perpendicular frames. Mm. Then this becomes the starting point of your section. Mm. So you now need to orient your section uh, to that to that uh, plane, and mm. then you mm. you rail it or use it on a sweep to. Did you manually yeah. choose 10, 10 frames or how many do you have? Yeah, yeah. Four, this six? is the default. Mm. Yeah. Oh, default. Mm, yeah. And it just, just happens to yeah. work because you've got five waves. So you've got the peaks and the troughs. Is that correct? Mm. E yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so at this point, it's not really important because I just wanted a starting point. Once mm. you, once you, because these are perpendicular frames. So at yes, any point, any point will work, to place actually. it, it's going to be perpendicular. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, this is basically a loft, right? A, a longer uh, a path for if you're going to uh, yeah, if, no. if you're going to make the pipe. Oh yeah, no, no this one I just basically created the number of intervals in between mm. to to do to do to create the pipe. Yeah. So when you when you when you loft it, you're going to get one one. It's basically you're basically lofting two curves. Right. Mm. Um, okay. So I, I think we can also loft these curves, these many curves here. Mm. See, but, but that is, all the, works. Mm. The the, yeah. the, the uh, tween component you actually fed into a twenty values starting from zero to one, right? So that's mm. Um, mm. that's why you're creating so many lines. I don't know if that's your question, Fayo, but no, no. My question was about the the pipe. Yes. I mean, all those oh, um, hmm. planes you modeled. I'm saying, because in Dino, I could put circles on that or yes. whatever shape I want and yeah. then make a loft out of those profiles. Yeah. Oh, but the other okay. way, the, the, the smarter way to do would be a sweep, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So make so, make so one plane makes and sense. Have, a, yeah. have a path. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I think this, this was, yeah, I was thinking backwards because at this point, I already have a road surface. Mm. Um, but then if you want to create those profiles at intervals, then yeah, this is like a quicker way to just do it between mm. Mm. the first curve and the last curve and how many, mm. however many intervals you need. And I, and I like that, that because it scales proportionally as well. So it's quite elegant, um, this, this way of doing it. It's quite mm. nice. Mm. Yeah. And then the per frames, you could get away with one, like you said, um, yeah, you, you, can only, get, you only yeah. need something mm. that's perpendicular to that curve so that you can get your profile that you can sweep in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You only need one. I think actually I was working on, uh, I think I, sh I have a script somewhere. I was working on a script earlier where I was, so I was trying to, 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 to remodel this. Um, I just saw it a few days ago and I was like, ah, oh, that's <laughs> cool. So it's a, it's a museum in the library somewhere in, in China. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, ah, let me rebuild that. It looks like an Apple yeah. store. Mm. <laughs> Same yeah. Idea. Oh, that's so cool. I think it's really nice. Uh, mm. I should have something like 
that somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I was wow. looking yeah, on it cool. earlier. Mm. Oh, cool. So what we're discussing about, um, so I think um, in this case, we have the pipes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe let me... Yeah, have different radii as well, I see. Mm. So mm-hmm. here with the pipes, off. Yeah. So we get the pipes. And then uh, here we have the these, these sections. Mm. If we're going to use, let's say, a rectangular shape. Mm. Um, there, yeah. So I, I, I basically created the profile, which is just a simple re- rectangle. Mm. And then um, I looked for the perpendicular frames. Mm. These these guys, so they are all. Mm. I think if we come to the top, well, it's a it's a ton of them. <clears throat> so maybe maybe let me do this, so that we just see a few. Okay. Oh, oh my, well. my still, still boy, this is, it's a lot. <laughs> I think it's my plain size. Yeah, let me make that. Let's it's see. not just me being tired because I'm seeing so many lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's a> <laughs> <lot of lines. laughs> yeah, so okay, I think I see. So maybe let me make that 0.2. Yeah, and so by you, you uh, yeah, there, there's a graph that little arrow that goes up that's basically telling it to take every single one of those and, and work on it, basically. Yeah, John, mm. so yeah, mm. yes, yeah, this one. So um, so the curves, if I go back to this view, so I have these curves here. Mm. And then I'm just throwing them into, so I'm, I'm sticking the parameter at the start, which is here yeah. on the bottom. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then I create uh, frames, those perpendicular frames, and then I already have my tiny rectangle here, which mm-hmm. is actually this little guy mm-hmm. is the profile. And then I just orient that uh, to come to the correct mm. planes. Oh, yeah. so it's it's like a in Dynamo that would be a transform. Okay. So you have a you have mm. you basically have a start UCS like a start um, coordinate system. And you map it onto and something then, else, and you and you transform it to another mm. coordinate system. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then after that, cool. you just sweep it and. Happy times. Mm. Cool. Yeah. So my, my guess is oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go, 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 go. You go. <laughs> okay, my guess is you can you can make a custom shape in Rhino, I guess, and put it in a mm. container and then sweep it as well. Yes, yeah. Because mm. I mean this okay. is just this is just a a shape in 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 uh what is it? In in grasshopper. So mm. we we could as well let's let's go to the top view here um you know i find with this computational design something sometimes is a small thing like for example that uh, rectangle you could give it a radius on the corners right and suddenly it o- already looks very really different m- m- yeah more elegant but yeah there's your mm-hmm. container mm-hmm. so i'm pretty sure if we do this is also going to work just the same should i um and then, like it's done it. mm. now we have our tiny mm. yeah yeah yeah. Mm. yeah so i find the stuff exciting it's so simple but it's actually so powerful <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually incredible <laughs> yeah yeah it is yeah incredible stuff. imagine modding okay. that manually and then an array and yes. then change I've it done and it. delete yeah. actually, <laughs> the reason i'm obsessed with this shape is because um we, I don't know if you know the Baha'i Temple. We yes, did, I, I just thought of it now. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's this shape. Yeah. So mm. I had to model it manually. And I was, <laughs> I wish I had learned Dynamo <laughs> earlier. <laughs> because <laughs> I would have done, I did the tiling drawings with Dynamo. I read I an wish article I made, about that. Yeah. I wish I made the shape with, with Dynamo. the Dynamo. Because yeah, I had yeah. to figure out some math. You know, I had yeah. to do like this projections and do yeah. it, man. it took me, it took me a week, you know, to like yeah. project like a all small, these. A small thesis. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah. It's like I never did well at, at maths at school. And the other day, I had to work out a roof pitch. And then I realized, but I have to, to find the tangent <laughs> to be able to get the dimension, <laughs> to get the angle right. Yeah, and it's yeah. actually so satisfying when you get it right. But I had to think because I'm, I'm not used to thinking like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's rewarding to you learn a lot from that, but it's just yeah. a waste of time. Man. Yeah, well, I said tangent, <laughs> I mean, but I meant tan, you know, as in sine and tan and all that. Oh, so tan, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, trick, yeah. <laughs> uh, I see we have one minute. Okay. Oh, no, can't, so, be, can't believe yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, it's been <laughs> great, guys. Yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, thank Thanks so you. much, man. It's, uh, I really find this really inspirational. So I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, this has been fun. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We'll catch up again soon, hopefully. Yeah, how Your do you guys album. feel? Should we should we do one more this year, like next month, or um, you know, because we are going into what they call the silly season, right? Or how, how are you guys feeling? Or do we mm-hmm. see how it goes and we just stay in touch, right? Yeah. Um, I'll be keen. Um, You're keen, yeah. Eh? I'm, yeah. I'm also keen mm-hmm. <laughs> most of the time. So. Yeah, we can just see if we can make it work. Let's do that. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's right. And mm-hmm. who's going to edit the video, stitch it together? Um, I haven't done it before, but I'm happy to try. So, yeah. Let's okay. See can... Um, you can send yeah. it to me as well. I use Premiere Pro. So is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. do thanks so much, guys. Have a good evening. Great. Right. You're next, okay, Albert. Okay, Look forward great. to you. I'll show you my fun, fun things right and my beginner okay. stuff. Cool. Cool. Great. All right. Cheers, guys. Good. Have a good night. Cheers. Cheers. You too.